Yeah, good day YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again here with another video. Today I want to talk about 10 degrees down with tilt, the history of it. Some very info, very good information I come across. And as far as I can sort of gather, 10 degrees down with tilt was sort of introduced in the late 60s, early 70s, somewhere around that period. So let's just go back a little bit before that. Uh, Joseph Burford Cox uh, patented the Cox chipper chain in 1950. He also painted in the full chisel chain in 1952. Ray Carlton, who used to work for uh, Oregon, uh, put a worldwide patent on the semi-chisel chain in 1964. So people used to file... Uh, 90 degrees flat on their semi-chisel and their chisel chains and somebody decided that they would tilt the file and I found a quote that sort of made a little bit more sense I don't know who wrote it but I came across it so I'll read out what somebody wrote and uh, it was very interesting so it starts off and it says back in the day when the taller cutter side plate chisel and semi-chisel chains were introduced, a round file held level at zero degrees put a blunt angle on the top plate of the cutter, whereas old style chipper chain wasn't affected so much. By lowering the handle 10 degrees, the inside corner of the top plate is thinned out with less bluntness, plus less angle or in brackets hook is applied to the side plate of the cutter. Oregon saw chain recommends 10 degrees down on most of their chains. Still just keep it at level zero degrees. At one point in time, not that long ago, still recommends 10 degrees down. So it must be a fairly old quote because when it says not that long, that long ago, still recommends 10 degrees down with tilt, it was about in the mid-1990s when they uh, decided not to do it. So that's going back over 30 years ago. Quite considerable long time. Now, I know for a fact that still RS include 10 degrees down with tilt because I've checked it uh, digitally and we'll just put a slide up there and that will show you still RS and it shows 30 degrees and that's 30 degrees from zero degrees vertical, which is what still recommend on their USG grinder. So that's tilted 30 degrees, which is the same as an Oregon uh, 60 degrees because they start at 90 degrees from the vertical reference point. So we've got 60 degrees on that side plate. Then if we go the opposite side and measure that, and we put a slide up for that, it shows uh, 40 degrees, which is 50 degrees on an Oregon grinder. Or in this case, it could have been done by file. But in the case of this still RS, it was done on a machine. So if you do lower your file down approximately 10 degrees, you will get a, a different angle on the side plate as opposed to the opposite side of the side plate. So slightly different cutting performance from one side to the other side. Now, interesting enough when we talk about still, I've got this book. And it's great reference because it goes back to 1990, still bar and chain. And they talk about 10 degrees downward tilt, so doesn't look too much the uh, file holder, does it? You'll see a picture there of 90 degrees, and you'll see another picture there of holding the file holder down 10 degrees tilt. And what's very interesting is... You'll find out, and, and you read it here, and it says, let's have a look at this. In the case of rapid, rapid micro and rapid super chains, the file holder is guided so that the file runs upwards at a 10 degree uh, from horizontal. So they're saying rapid micro, that's uh, semi-chisel, and rapid super is full chisel. So interesting how they recommended 10 degrees downward tilt for... Uh, the semi chisel and when we were reading that information from before i found another quote uh it was from the same guy 
And we'll just read that out because this is interesting information as well. So the guy writes, because it was on a forum, so somebody replied back to him and maybe they were a bit confused by what he wrote. So he rewrote something and it goes off like this. I'll just repeat it. If you could all bear with me, I'll try and explain better about the 10 degree down angle method I talked about earlier. This angle method was adapted when the semi-chisel and chisel chains were developed in the late 60s and the early 70s. These chains had a taller, flatter side plate that needed a new filing angle versus the level method used on the standard round and chipper chain. If the file handle was lowered 10 degrees on the chipper chain, which has a shorter, lower side plate, a negative cutting angle in the side plate would result, even going into a back slope resulted in very poor cutting chain. Now, with semi-chisel and chisel cutter side plate having increased height and flatness, the filing method used on chipper chain would produce a severe hook on the chisel chains. The level held file could be raised to produce a proper side plate cutting angle, but the top plate cutting angle would turn out to be blunt. So how do you fix this? You guessed it, 10 degrees tilt. So that's a blast from the past. Very interesting information. And you can clearly see that people were using 10 degrees downward tilt, even on semi-chisel. So what I would recommend to most people that any type of tilt won't really hurt. And interesting enough how they were using and recommended even a little bit of tilt on semi-chisel. Now, I invertedly made a mistake uh, many times where when I was hand filing that I lowered the file down when I was doing semi-chisel uh, without realising it. So what I do these days is when I hand file is I stand behind the cutters. I was lining myself up with the cutter so I couldn't see where I was tilting the file. So if I stand behind the cutters, roughly where the power head is on a chainsaw, and I've got the file in front of me, or I'm looking down that way, so I can see, I've got clear view whether I've got it tilted that way or that way. So yeah, whereas before I was standing that way filing right in front of it. So if it was up or down, I really didn't notice. So that's a mistake. It's a technique. So you may want to consider if you're filing that way, standing right behind the file, that you stand that way right in front of the file. So the bar's running that way and you're filing that way. You can see whether you're tilting it up and down. So one, only one other thing that I'd like to turn around and sort of demonstrate about uh, holding the file and doing 10 degrees downward tilt and how it thins out the working corner and changes uh, the angle from the side plate to the uh, other corner of the top plate. So if we zoom in, we've got a replica of a tooth and we'll hold this. And if we put a file up against that edge, that beveled edge, it sits flat, but if we tilt it down 10 degrees, you'll notice that the back is exposed. So roughly 10 degrees is going to be something like that. And if we bring that up over there, you'll see that it's not touching the back. So in that case, that when we do tilt it down like that, we expose the back that doesn't get filed and we start to file the front until we reach the back. So the file in the 10 degree downward tilt exposes the back of the tooth or the side that's closest to the right hand side is exposed and no filing takes place until we file off the point. Now, the other thing that I've sort of read about, and if you go through a lot of the forums where the 10 degrees tilt is spoken about and people with a lot of knowledge is that when you thin out the edge, it can create a more durable corner 
that stays sharper for longer. Now, after reading all of this, and then, you know, it's like a lot of things that you read, you sort of wonder, is the information accurate? So I decided to find out for myself, and what I did was I took a 20-inch chain, put it on my MS311, I sharpened the chain up on the grinder to get it all accurate as possible. I used 60 degrees on the top plate cutting angle and 30 degrees on the top plate and I did the chain without no tilt. And I checked the rakers. I proceeded to cut a log about nine inches of diameter and it roughly came out 10 seconds. So we'll say 10 seconds, right? I'd done about four or five passes so that I could get an average and the average was about 9.85. So we're gonna say 10 seconds. Then I brought the chain back inside the workshop, put it on here, Loosen the vise, right hand tooth, gave it 10 degrees downward tilt. Done the right side, 10 degrees tilt on the left side. Check the rakers, because I've sharpened it, want to make sure that everything's equal. Took that back out, exactly on the same log, done four or five passes, 9.95. There was nothing in it. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to happen on all full chisels, but it happened on the full chisel that I was using. Now, Oregon will recommend most of their full chisel chains have uh, 10 degrees downward tilt. Uh, so do uh, Carlton recommend on some of their chains. Uh, Husqvarna recommended on some of their chains. Still just don't recommend it anymore. The only reason, and I asked a steel dealer, uh, and a lot of times, you know, the people at work at steel behind the counter, if they're fairly young, they don't remember what happened in the old days, let alone 35 years, 40 years ago. And I don't think steel, I haven't seen any publication or any anything whatsoever as to why they don't recommend the downward tilt. But I do remember reading something that sort of turned around and went along the lines that the reason that still don't recommend 10 degrees downward tilt any longer is that people just got it wrong. So they were causing more trouble uh, than anything else. And what that simply meant was that people were tilting the file much, much more than 10 degrees. So much so that they end up filing the uh, uh, tie straps. So, you know, that could have been 17 degrees downward tilt. So, they're making the situation going from bad to worse. So the best thing to do, don't recommend it. But as I did say uh, on the other slides, that if you have a look, that it was built into their RS chain. And I've heard the same from other people where they claim that other manufacturers where 10 degrees is built in. You can check... Uh, the side plate, if the side plate's 60 and you're looking at the opposite side of the side plate, but you need some sort of digital uh, angle finder uh, that I used on my phone and you could zoom into the tooth and, and you could align that, that angle system and it would tell you what the degree of that was. And as I said, it was 10 degrees different. So definitely still do that. Also, the other thing that I will mention, uh, a steel USG grinder is totally different than any other grinder. And, and that goes the same for all grinders that are manufactured out there, probably except the Oregon ones, but there are a few other different ones. You're better off making sure that the angles that are recommended that come with the grinder if they give a chart for, for Stool or Oregon or Carlton or any other brand, you're probably better off sticking with those angles from the manufacturer unless you know otherwise. And what I mean by that is if you've got years of experience, then an experienced operator, even like myself, can pick up a chain, look at it, and straight away just say, I'm going to give it this grind. In most cases, in most cases, on your full chisel, 60 degrees on the top plate cutting angle, 30 degrees on here will get you out of trouble. Still, 
are always aggressive. Even on their still USG grinder, they are recommending 50 degrees top plate cutting angle, right? And they recommend 30 degrees here. They don't recommend 25 degrees. Still are going in aggressive. The only thing and I've sort of read about still is in frozen really hard wood, they recommend 25 degrees. But generally, uh, it's 30 for uh, nine, nine times out of 10, you'll find uh, on a still, it'll be 30 degrees. So much so that the uh, file guide doesn't have any 25 degree marks on it. It's all 30 degrees. Everything that you see with still, whether it's semi-chisel or full chisel, will be 30 degrees on the top plate. All right. So if you want 25 degrees, that's okay. It's going to be more durable or last longer, but still, as I said, go for the aggressive side. So I hope that information helps. It was quite interesting. When you look at a blast from the past from Joseph Burford Cox to Ray Carlton with the worldwide patents on those chains that they came out with and how they even used on the uh, Cox chipper chain, they filed that fairly straight and they filed full chisel straight and they found out that if they tilted the file down a little bit on the chipper chain, it didn't sort of cause much effect. And someone found out, and it was probably by accident, that if they tilted the file down on full chisel, it, there was benefits from that. And as I said before, I did a test, time-based test on a log, and there was nothing in it, but that was based on one chain. And one chain doesn't mean that every other chain is out there. Oregon have a huge range, probably even more than still, on their full chisel chain. So if they recommend 10 degrees downward tilt, I would be doing 10 degrees downward tilt. Same as if they recommend 10 degrees downward tilt on a Carlton chain or Husqvarna. In most cases, I would go with the manufacturer on their recommendation. Yes, I've got extremely hardwood, so I have to stick with hardwood settings as opposed to softwood settings. But generally, we're talking about five degrees difference between hardwood and softwood. Not that much. Anyway, I hope this information helps. I probably won't do anything else on 10 degrees downward tilt. Uh, I've got quite a few videos on it, but I guess they're all pretty much of a muchness. But it's just interesting with this uh, information about what they found out many years ago uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, when a lot of people were starting to tilt the file. Anyway, I hope that information, uh, you find it useful. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.